Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is the DC voltmeter. Our objective is to introduce the DC voltmeter function on the digital multimeter. This lecture operates under the presumption that the viewers watch the ohm meter and protoboards lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only didn't recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll be making use of the BK Precision 2831E digital multimeter. This in no way is meant to be neither an exhaustive review of this tool nor an endorsement of this particular manufacturer or model. I only wish to present the function of interest on a representative example so the viewer can gain some practical exposure to this function and interpret the manner in which results are displayed. A digital multimeter, or DMM, is a single meter that has multiple, hence the term multi, mode settings. DMMs can be used to measure both DC and AC voltage and current, resistance, capacitance, forward bias voltage of a diode, frequency, and much more. Today, we're only going to look at the DC voltmeter function on the digital multimeter, where a DC voltmeter is a device used to measure the DC voltage rise induced by a DC source, and or the DC voltage drop across the two terminals of a load element inside a circuit. We'll examine other functions of the DMM in later lectures. This discussion of DC voltmeters will be brief for two reasons. One, using voltmeter really isn't that hard, and two, the topics of voltmeters, power supplies, and meters in electrical circuits are tightly intertwined, and it's hard to separate one without going into detail about the other. This being said, I'm going to rip them apart and send them to opposite corners of the lab where we can get a good look at one of them without being entangled with the others. This is the briefest of brief summaries of voltmeters and serves only as a springboard for later discussions. Stay tuned for later lectures which will include further applications of DC voltmeters. If you recall, voltage is an important basic electrical property. Voltage is a measurement of how much energy possessed by a group of charges where one volt is one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. Voltage is a two-point measurement. Current, in contrast, is a measurement of moving charges through a single point, where one amp of current is one coulomb of charge per second. This implies that voltage and current are not the same thing, and they are not measured in the same manner, nor are they measured with the same equipment. At a basic level, voltage is a differential observed between two points. Voltage is measured across something, where one point is measured with reference to another. The phrase with reference to means that here is the point I am comparing all other points to. Customarily, the reference point used by voltmeters is the black common lead. The red lead then measures the voltage differential at some point of interest with reference to the black lead. Let's use this circuit for the first half of this lecture to demonstrate the use of the voltmeter. Consider a 5 volt source supplying current to a 200 ohm resistor. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates this resistor would draw 25 milliampers of current. Application of the power formula demonstrates this resistor would dissipate 125 milliwatts of power. Given the direction of conventional current travel, we should expect a 5 volt drop to be exhibited across the resistor, oriented positive to negative, top to bottom. To measure the voltage rise induced by the source, one would place a DC voltmeter common lead on the negative terminal of the voltage source and the red lead on the positive terminal of the voltage source. A voltmeter configured in the following fashion would measure a 5 volt rise. To measure the voltage drop across an element in a circuit, one will place the voltmeter common lead on the assumed negative terminal of the element and the red lead on the positive terminal of the element. A voltmeter configured in the following fashion would measure a 5 volt drop. In both scenarios, the voltmeter is side by side or in parallel with the element of interest, measuring the voltage differential between two points. An ideal voltmeter acts like an infinite resistance through which no current will flow and the presence of which will not influence the circuit in any way, shape, or form. In reality, a real-world voltmeter does not have an infinite resistance, but rather an extremely high resistance and will subtly influence the circuit under inspection. For now, let's simply assume an ideal scenario in which the voltmeter acts like an infinite resistance through which no current will flow and does not affect the circuit. We'll examine instrument loading effects in later lectures on series parallel circuits. Let's use the DMM in DC voltmeter mode to measure voltage in a real world circuit. To do so, we need to use the checklist. I'm not urging you to use this checklist every time. I'm demanding you use this checklist every time. This checklist will save your measurement equipment and circuit a lot of costly downtime and may potentially save your life. I am not overstating the benefits of using this checklist. Use the checklist. Think about it. Really think about it. Take your time and think before you act. The checklist is four steps. 
follow them one through four, and you will get it right every single time. Skip a step, do a step wrong, or do a step out of order, and you will get it wrong every single time. Function, leads, range, placement. Function. We need to place the DMM in DC voltmeter mode. Upon powering out the BK Precision 2831E DMM, we see it does a quick functions check and immediately defaults to the DC voltmeter function. This is the function we'll be exploring today. Leads. Before we make use of the DC voltmeter function, we need to insert the leads in the right place. Black lead into the black common hole. Red lead into the red hole indicated with a V, the shorthand for units of voltage over it. Yes, you can put a black lead in a red hole or a red lead in a black hole, just like you can put a hat on your foot, but that is not its intended purpose. Range. Don't worry about it. The BK Precision 2831E DMM is auto-ranging, meaning it automatically picks an appropriate range to obtain the most precise results. Note you can force it out of auto-range mode into manual range if you want to, but we'll keep it as is. Finally, placement. All you need to do to check the voltage differential between two points is to place the two test leads on the two points of interest. Here's a triple output benchtop power supply. Two outputs are adjustable and a third establishes a fixed five volt differential between these two binding posts. We'll examine this power supply in greater detail in later lectures. To measure the five volt output, the black common lead of the voltmeter is placed in the black negative terminal of the source and the red test lead on the red positive terminal of the source. When the power supply is turned on, the voltmeter displays a value reasonably close to the nominal or nameplate value of the five volt power supply. This is sometimes known as the unloaded voltage or the open circuit voltage meaning it is the voltage differential established by the source when it is not providing current to any load elements in a circuit. If one was to swap the lead placement such that the black common lead is on the positive terminal and the red lead is on the negative terminal, the DC voltmeter displays roughly negative 5 volts, meaning a 5 volt differential still exists, only that the negative terminal is 5 volts lower than the assumed reference. Let's turn off the power supply and build our circuit of interest and then use the DMM to measure voltage inside the circuit. Our circuit again consists of a 5 volt source and a 200 ohm resistor rated for low power applications of less than a quarter watt. A nominal 200 ohm resistor should have a 4 band resistor color code of red, black, brown, gold, meaning 20 followed by 10. Let's use the ohmmeter function to verify if a resistor matching this description is inside the expected range. We need to take the DMM out of voltmeter mode and put it in ohmmeter mode using the checklist to do so. Function, leads, range, placement. Given a plus or minus 5% tolerance, we should anticipate a low of 190 ohms up to a high of 210 ohms. When placed between the probes of the ohmmeter, the nominal 200 ohm resistor appears to have a resistance inside our expected range. Let's put the DMM aside for now and build our circuit. A lead from the power supply red binding post positive terminal is landed on the protoboard red binding post. A lead from the power supply black negative binding post is landed on the protoboard black binding post. A wire from the protoboard red binding post is landed on node 5A through E. A wire from the protoboard black binding post is landed on node 5F through J across the ditch. One terminal of the nominal 200 ohm resistor is inserted into the collection of points constituting the node 5A through E and the other terminal of the resistor is inserted into the collection of points constituting the node 5F through J across the ditch. The one and only path from node 5A through E to 5F through J is through the nominal 200 ohm resistor. A complete circuit has been established and we can turn on the power supply. Let's use the DMM in DC voltmeter mode to measure the loaded voltage supplied by the source, meaning this is the voltage differential established by the source when it is providing current to load elements in the circuit. This is in contrast to the unloaded voltage or open circuit voltage which we measured previously. Ideally, we should observe roughly 5 volts. This necessitates we take the DMM out of ohmmeter mode and put it back in DC voltmeter mode. Use the checklist to do so. Function, leads, range, placement. To measure the loaded voltage, the black common lead of the voltmeter is placed in the black negative terminal of the source and the red lead on the red positive terminal of the source. As anticipated, we observe a voltage rise of roughly 5 volts. Let's now use the DC voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across the nominal 200 ohm resistor. There's a couple ways of measuring voltage drops across components inserted in a protoboard. Method 1. 
If the component is large enough, use a pair of clip leads directly connected to the component. The red lead of the voltmeter is clipped to one terminal of the resistor, landed at node 5A through E, and the black lead of the voltmeter is clipped to the other terminal of the resistor, landed at node 5F through J. We observe a voltage drop of roughly 5 volts from node 5A through E to node 5F through J, as we'd expect. Method 2. If space comes at a premium, use accessory wires with a pair of clip leads at the nodes of interest. The red lead accessory wire is directly plugged into node 5A through E, and the black lead accessory wire is plugged directly into node 5F through J. As previously, we observe a voltage drop of roughly 5 volts from node 5A through E to node 5F through J, as we'd expect. Easy, right? Yes. Voltmeters are super easy to use because it's easy to recognize that voltmeters are two-point measurements across the terminals of interest. This being said, you can screw it up, and here's a couple ways you might do so. Be on the lookout for these mix-ups and be smart enough to recognize them when they happen. Here's one way of screwing up voltage measurement. Voltage is a two-point measurement. What if you measured voltage at the same point? Consider both leads of the voltmeter plugged into node 5A through E. The voltmeter demonstrates no voltage differential exists between node 5A through E and node 5A through E. One should hope so. They're the same point. This is not how you employ a DC voltmeter. Here's another way of taking a bad voltage measurement. Again, voltage is a two-point measurement and both these points need to be in the same circuit. Consider the red lead of the voltmeter plugged into node 5A through E the black lead dangling out in space or plugged into some isolated, unconnected node. Any reading by this voltmeter is absolute nonsense because the reference lead isn't inside this circuit. Here's another way of taking a bad voltage measurement. Recall that voltage is dropped across a component only when current flows through it. If we include an open or missed connection in our circuit, no circuit exists, no current flows, and no voltage will be dropped across the opened element. Here the power supply positive connection is landed at node 2A through E, and the power supply negative connection is landed at node 5F through J. One terminal of the nominal 200 ohm resistor is landed at node 5A through E, and the other terminal of the nominal 200 ohm resistor is landed at node 5F through J. Note that no connection exists between node 2A through E and node 5A through E despite their close proximity. No circuit exists and no current flows. We should anticipate no voltage drop. As we anticipated, the voltmeter demonstrates no voltage differential exists between node 5A through E and node 5F through J. Finally, here's one more way of incorrectly taking a voltage measurement that yields a false reading that can be misinterpreted if you're not paying close attention. Again, consider the previous circuit where an open exists between the power supply positive connection landed at node 2A through E and one terminal of the nominal 200 ohm resistor at node 5A through E. Again, voltage is dropped across a component only when current flows through it. No circuit exists, no current flows, and the resistor will not experience a voltage drop. This being said, a voltage rise still exists across the terminals of the source. If a technician takes a voltage measurement not across the terminals of the resistor, as would be required to measure voltage dropped across the resistor, but rather across the open from node 2A through E to node 5A through E, the voltmeter measures a 5 volt differential across the open. Rather than reading the voltage dropped across the resistor as desired, this would be equivalent to measuring the unloaded voltage rise induced by the source. A technician, unaware of the incorrect placement of the voltmeter, might incorrectly assume a 5 volt drop across the resistor, but this is far from the truth. Again, I must remind you that an ideal voltmeter is modeled as an infinite resistance through which no current will flow. The inclusion of the voltmeter does not complete the circuit, and this placement is not measuring the voltage drop across the resistor, but rather the voltage differential across the open. With an open in the circuit, no current exists and no voltage is dropped across the resistor. Be on the lookout for incorrect placements of measurement probes. Again, a complete circuit must exist and current must flow through an element if there is to be any voltage dropped across it and power delivered. Alright, that's about it for today. See, I told you it'd be brief. We'll be making use of DC voltmeters in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture introduced the DC voltmeter function on the digital multimeter. We use the function, leads, range, and placement checklist to place the DMM in DC voltmeter mode and use the DC voltmeter to measure the voltage rise induced by a source 
and the voltage drop across an element inside a circuit. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. And be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.